All right, YouTube, hello and welcome to an impromptu video from your boy, Horrible Noise, AKA Hoi Noi. This is Hoi Noi TV. Remember, in my last upload, we had our girl, Sha Dynasty, play. Oh, never mind. That's, that's her husband. Shady's up here these days. Lay a beautiful six egg clutch, her first ever of her life. What an angel. Of course, the pairing is Phantom to uh, Lesser. So we might get some potions, that's the hope. Uh, they are 57 days in and are gonna start pipping any day now. Technically, I could actually cut into the egg and see what's in there and it wouldn't be a problem. It's just not really my style. So we'll wait for the first natural little pip, the first head to poke out, and then we'll cut into the rest. Uh, I just woke up, you can tell by my hoarse voice, but uh, I checked every morning as I do on my other pregnancy, uh, which is our girl Stunner here, the Sherbert fly, and she has finally laid. This is her second clutch ever. Let's check on my other pregnancy. She's still chilling. I don't know if she's actually gonna produce. She looks like she may have reabsorbed some stuff, but uh, what are you gonna do? And we're gonna fill up these water dishes immediately. Uh, and there's also some poop stuff to take care of, but not with this girl. And I'm most excited about this, so I'm gonna do this first. Now, removing her from her eggs is uh, usually a time when a snake that's otherwise a sweetheart, like this one, is gonna get a little crazy. But I think this girl, she's she knows the drill. Yeah, oh my goodness, you're an angel. I love you. Let it go, let it go. Okay, so things got all knocked around. Uh, you can see a very deflated snake here, but that's okay. And she's not biting me because she's a, a sweet gal. Uh, we got no less than seven healthy eggs. This one was kicked out, so it wouldn't have hatched in uh, the wild. Or maybe she would have wrapped it up later, but I'd, I don't know if she would have. Uh, maybe seven was just too many for her to hold on to. So those kind of sacrifices have to be made. Uh, these are gorgeous eggs, and we are going to hatch every single one of these. The pairing is, of course, her, the Sherbert Fly, which is a super pastel fire pinstripe, to her husband, Harry Belafonte, the Banana Enchi. So, could get some killer, killer uh, multiple gene animals that are just a total pain to figure out what they are. Uh, but they're always gorgeous. So, that'll be exciting. The other big take home is that I said in my last video that I thought that my snakes were all on the same track. I bred them all at the same time and I said I even compared it to human women's periods and how they sync up together. Uh, but this is a full 60 days. The other eggs that were already laid are just about to hatch and these ones just showed up so I was completely wrong. And this snake was so plump, so fucking juicy with eggs for the last 60 days uh, that I thought she was gonna lay it any minute and it took this long, so my bad. Oh, and she's gonna bite me. I'm sorry, girl. I know you. Obviously she's in mom mode now, so we're gonna change out all of this coconut substrate because it has the scent of her eggs. Once that scent is gone, she's gonna kind of go back to normal and I'm gonna try to get her some food because she actually, she actually has refused food for the last 98 days. So we're just shy of the 100 day mark. We'll see if we can get her to eat now that things are in the clear. I do have some rodents defrosting right now. I don't know if she's gonna eat today. She probably just needs to rest. Anyway, look at that. Seven fantastic eggs from a killer pairing. Uh, this animal, you know, she already is essentially a five gene animal. I guess four gene, there's a lot going on and hopefully I am able to figure out what I'm looking at when the babies come, but either way, very excited. Put this away for a minute while I take care of a few things. Uh, we rolled around these eggs, so we are gonna have to candle them, then we're gonna put them in vermiculite and put them in the incubator, and I'll bring you guys along for all of that. All right, y'all, welcome to the dark den. We are in my bathroom with the door closed, and we're gonna candle each one of these eggs because they got knocked around, but even if they didn't, I like to do it just to be sure. I've said it before, but if an egg, uh, if an embryo adheres to one side of the egg and that egg is rolled, uh, the embryo will actually drown and you'll, you'll lose your, you'll lose your egg. So it's, it's, it's worth doing. Here we go. Number one. I 
think that's it, but it could also be too soon. Uh, they take a second to adhere. No, I'm, I'm quite confident that's it. Look, all the veins come together. Usually you can see a little wobble. I'm not 100% sure I'm seeing the wobble, but where the nexus of veins comes together, that's the spot. And you can see the sort yeah, actually this is really obvious. Okay, so this is ST for stunner, because that snake's name is stunner. We're gonna put it 50% down in the substrate with the name on the top. And I bet you most of these we're not even gonna, I bet you most of these are not rolled. I only rolled a few. Oh yeah, this is an obvious one. Do you see a little bit of movement? That's where the embryo is. Not movement, but reactivity, right? It's like a little bubble. And we'll put that one here where it already was. Who's next? Oh yeah, we got another one right off the bat. Look at that. ST. Who's this? There it is. There it is. Oh, this is a chunky boy. Can't get the light to pierce through. Oh, but they're making it easy for us. I hope you guys can see that. But there's a very obvious wobble. Wobbly little circle right here. So that is it. Oh, I just got myself in the eye with the flashlight. Another easy one. Wobble, wobble. And this one was slightly rolled, but right away I can see that this is the spot. So, that is good stuff. Oh. This one's actually free floating. I just saw it. Oh no, we're okay. We're okay, either way. Um, so yeah, that is candling done. These will now stay for the next 60 days in here with no air holes, no nothing. They don't need it. This is vermiculite, 50-50 uh, with water or a little less. Basically the rule is you, you wet it and you want it at a point where when you squeeze it, no water comes out. And that's where we are. So we're looking good. And let's put them in the incubator. Okay, this is my third hand Reptibator. Uh, it's working like a charm. This is the existing clutch. I could have just added the seven eggs in here, but since these guys are gonna hatch, Tomorrow, oh, I can feel the snake inside. And sometimes I can see the snake moving inside, which I think is really cool. As a rule, as the eggs deflate, that means that the snake is absorbing the last of the yolk. These ones are still plump, so maybe we could expect them to pop, or I should say hatch uh, a little bit later. But last year, I had zero deflation. I thought maybe the eggs had gone bad. We were at day 60 and they hadn't deflated at all. And then just fully formed, perfectly healthy snakes just popped out, you know? So it doesn't always happen. I imagine the humidity is a factor as well. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The snake consumes the yolk, uh, but there's no transfer of energy or, or mass or matter outside the egg, right? So even if the snake was getting bigger, it wouldn't shrink the egg or make it wrinkle. But at the same time, generally it, it's supposed to happen. So I'm seeing it this time, I didn't see it last time. As a rule, these guys have all been at the same temperature, so they're developing at the same rate. And I could technically cut them open right now and there would be snakes in there, but I prefer to let it happen au naturel. These are uh, essentially bags of, of, of gel. 
non-toxic hydrogel, I don't know. So they come as ice packs in something that I order online, uh, but they also work just as, I mean, other people use water bottles. I have these because, you know, they, they can uh, change shape a little better, but they just act as a heat sink. So these things have been heated to the exact temperature of the incubator and they just keep it more stable. Imagine if the power went out or, or I didn't put the lid back on correctly or something like that. Uh, and also I had this big empty space, uh, which I didn't want the incubator to have to work to heat all the time. So once these get up to temperature, they're fairly stable, which is dope. However, we're taking them out now because we need to put in a second egg box. And this is a moment of truth. Is it gonna fit? Not technically, but I feel that we put this one right down. And since these guys are ready to pop, we can let them have a little bit of a elevation uh, differentium. I don't think it's a big deal. So there, and we'll put one more of these back in for good measure. Uh, I hope the angle's been okay on this. For a more bird's eye view, this thing is really beat up. Like like I said, it's third hand. I bought it second hand. Uh, they retail for, I don't even remember, 250 or almost 300. The last guy bought it for, I don't know how much. I bought it for 150. If I ever sell it, I'll sell it for, uh, I mean, it looks like it's worth nothing, but it is worth 100 bucks still. Like this is a, a complicated piece of machinery. Well, not really, but anyway, these, these, are, these uh, coils are heated and regulated by a built-in digital readout thermostat. And uh, I've found because uh, I actually stepped on this thing once and exploded this corner, uh, I taped it back up perfectly and it's sturdy as ever. And not that styrofoam is very sturdy, but it doesn't hold, like if you set it to 88, which is what you want for ball pythons, and you do a measurement inside your egg box, you'll only have like 83, so that's not good. So I. I very carefully bring the temperature up. Uh, and while it will make that temperature just in ambient in the box, in the incubator, it won't penetrate the egg box. The actual eggs won't reach that temperature. So that's something you gotta keep an eye on. And that's the reason you really wanna have a $25 temp gun from Amazon or Walmart. Uh, you know, these are the, the things they use on your forehead for COVID. They're just phenomenal. It's really the only thermometer that I use. I do regular temp checks on all my snakes, all their hot spots, all their cool spots. And of course, of course, of course, when I'm working with eggs and incubators, I make good use of this thing too. So consider a infrared. I don't know what this brand is, but I've dropped it so many times and it still works. It doesn't even rattle. It used to rattle. That's good. It's, it's repaired itself somehow. Okay, so see you in uh, one to three days for these guys coming out of the egg and see you in 60 days for these guys. Uh, hopefully big mama over here still lays, but I just don't know if it's gonna happen. It's been, it's been a long time. I've actually noticed her getting smaller instead of bigger, which generally isn't a good sign. But that's it for eggs for this video. And uh, I do have some feeding to do. Should I put that in this video or save it for another video? No, I've been, uh, I've been slacking lately, so let's put it in this video too. Stay tuned, we're gonna feed a bunch of snakes, a bunch of humanely killed, frozen, and then thawed rodents, which is their favorite and only food. It's all they need. It's a complete diet for the majority of snakes on this planet. All right, gang, I already fed most of the snakes, including this big girl. Uh, I know I said I'd show it to you, but I just completely forgot. Uh, if we move fast, we might be able to catch some people swallowing. So get ready to see dead rodents. Here we have Thick Daniel going into shed, but he is chomping. And his sister Mona, deep in shed, deep in blue, but she still takes food. She's an awesome girl. Uh, darkening up as she gets older, she used to be bright yellow. It tends to happen unless you can make the super pastel so they get a double dose of that uh, extra yellow that comes with it. She apparently doesn't have that, but that's okay. She's still maybe the sweetest snake I have ever worked with. She dynasty. Oh, I keep mixing these guys up. Did she get through? Yeah, she's already swallowed. So she's looking good. Fully recovered 60 days later um, from her lay with, uh, you know, at least I've been feeding her weekly, so so more than more than six rats, and she's put the weight back on, perfect. She's looking good. 
and uh, we can expect even more eggs from her next year with the continued growth of the snake because she's still a young girl. The other one was Harry Belafonte, but I fed him a minute ago. Yeah, he's already swallowed, but he took, and that is good stuff. We've got Mighty Max in here, made a big mess, wet his newspaper with a giant rat, but he has grown so much. He has grown so much. Uh, almost fully recovered with the nose rub you can see there's you know probably going to be a bit of a permanent scar but uh yeah i got him in a better situation than he was in before and uh, he's turned out to be a really friendly snake uh that i really trust and uh i leave supervised but i, I leave him uh free roaming out in the tree which is over here. And he'll stay up there for hours and hours and just hang out. So it's pretty cool. So Stunner is in her new enclosure with all new bedding, new water dish, new water. She didn't take the rat, although she looked interested. So I'm just gonna leave it in there and we'll see if she takes it in private. We'll come back in a second. Meanwhile, we have two more snakes to feed. All right, my YouTube game is uh, extremely weak because I forgot to film again, but after a full three and a half minutes of uh, dancing the rat around, she decided she would take it. Uh, so, first meal in almost a hundred days. You can see this snake <laughs> is skinny, but she was huge just this morning. She's deflated because she's no longer full of eggs. All right, the next guy. Whoa, <laughs> okay, all right, he's, he's hungry. Toothpaste, always a big eater. Having kind of a bad shed right now, but he still wants to eat. I gave him a soak yesterday and it still didn't come off, so we're gonna do a soak. Well, maybe we won't now that he's eaten, but in any case, he went into blue, he came out uh, and he shed just a little bit. And you can see those wrinkles. Uh, the skin, I guess, is loose. Usually that's dehydration, but um, I'm hard pressed to think that's the case here. I think it's just part of his crummy shed. Either way, he's going to be very hydrated uh, after the soak that he had. And uh, this is a wet rat. We're also gonna be misting him a lot. Anyway, he's in good shape. I've, I've never had a bed shed with him before and I'm a little perplexed, but I'm on top of it and we will figure it out one way or another. All right, next up, we got Big Mama. And uh, she notoriously prefers live. And uh, I've gotten her on to Frozen Thawed. Let's see if she goes. I think she's gonna take it. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, I noticed the water was low this morning. I filled it up, but she's obviously been in it because she spilled most of it out again. So I'll leave that for now. What are you gonna do? All right, we just came back from dinner and we have our first pip. And uh, there was a head out and it just popped back in. Uh, I couldn't tell what it was. It essentially looks like it's either a phantom or a lesser, nothing too crazy. But since one has pipped, that means we can cut all of them. So join us now as we get our first look at these little guys and gals. Um, I'm just gonna do little slits to make sure everybody's okay and alive and we can get a kind of an idea about the morph of the snake, but they're not hatching tonight, they're just opening up and it'll take them several days to reabsorb just the last of that yolk. And uh, hopefully we can tell what they are, but if we can't, we'll just have to wait for them to come all the way out of the egg and we don't wanna rush that, so hang tight. I swear, I'd, anyway, okay. All right, so we're, we're cutting the rest of the eggs because the one has pipped. And uh, let's see what we can get. I'm gonna push out all that egg juice because it's good and they're gonna use it. Uh, okay, so I see some very light yellow and some very light brown. Could be the lesser, could be the phantom, probably just a lesser. Uh, I don't think we were recording on this one, but this one looks like another lesser. And our first guy that came out, I saw his face. He looked like a lesser. This one. We're gambling. Yeah, we, we kind of took a risk here. We could get, again, looks like a lesser. And uh, we have one left. Oh, we have two left. Okay, thank God. We're looking for like a ridiculously white snake. That's, that's the hope. And there's a little 
slit, slitterino. Looks like another lesser. Let me just show you guys. Yeah, much the same. Beautiful, cool snakes. I'm happy to have them. Last chance on the white snake. Come on. Nope. <laughs> All right, we might have missed on everything, but stay tuned. Once these animals are actually out of their eggs, we'll know for sure. Uh, no white snakes, but still some cool looking stuff. Uh, I can't actually remember off the top of my head all the different combinations we can get, but I will be sure to put it in the video. I just gotta check the genetic wizard on the internet. All right, it's the next morning. We had heads peeking out, but they've gone back in, but we have the one brave soul who did the original pip. He or she is out and about, and uh, we're gonna have our first look. Hello, Angel. Let's get you rinsed off. Looks like a lesser to me. All right, we are yet another day ahead, and uh, we have some poppy, poopy, poopy, poppy boys. Check them out. Check it out. They're looking good. Uh, we've literally produced all of the same morph. Like, I'll confirm later, but... Looking at it, it's just lesser, 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 lesser. Just wanted to show this off real quick. Oh, sorry, buddy. Show us your belly. Show us your belly. See that? It's the snake's belly button, essentially. That's where they were attached to their yolk sac, and it's just drying and uh, will shrivel. And I don't know if it's going to be absorbed or fall off. I think it's, it's just absorbed, and then a little slit will will close up, and uh, there will be no scar, no nothing. But you know, it, technically, it's a belly button. All right, gang, check it out. I've got everybody in a full-size adult bin here. Uh, it's been three days since uh, people started to leave the egg. Uh, so the options we had on our Mendelian square of genetics was uh, we could have ended up like dad, which is a lesser. And looking at these, I think that we got five of those and then we got one that's different. And it could have been 25% chance of being a lesser, 25% of chance being a normal which is what this one may be, but also 25% chance of being a phantom, which is extremely similar in appearance to the normal, but just has a little bit more white around these things, um, and also a little more white in between the scales, and th this is just a little bit lighter. So yeah, this is Mum. She's a phantom. And uh, I don't know, if anybody, I honestly, I haven't decided. If you're an expert, let me know. Looking at this thing and seeing the the white around the alien heads here, I think this is a phantom. So we produced no normals, which is good. And uh, we did not produce the one that we really wanted, which was the 25% chance of the white snake. Now, I had uh, initially planned this morph because people told me that I could get blue-eyed leucistics. And the genetic wizard tells me I get something called a karma, which is just the combination of the phantom and the lesser that makes an all-white snake with blue eyes, which is, is karma just another name for blue-eyed Lucy? I don't know. Uh, another person told me I was going to get potions. That seems to not be the case at all. Uh, I knew what I was doing. Maybe I forgot somewhere along the, you know, 200-day process of uh, pairing these snakes and then producing these babies. Uh, but yeah, we we essentially whiffed on the the really cool, really different, really expensive uh, snake. But that's cool. We're doing this for fun. We're doing this for the scientific fascination that comes with it. These are beautiful, beautiful snakes. Uh, the Phantom, again, is really close to the normal. The main appeal is not how it looks visually, but that it's part of the Blue-Eyed Lucy complex and can produce white snakes. So uh, if you want to be a true baller and you want to love these animals for the next 25 years, because that's how long they live, ad admittedly they're very low maintenance and they're really rewarding to keep and really friendly, you would do well to get uh, this one and then its uh, counterpart. 
And there's actually no issues to breed brothers and sisters together with these guys. I mean, at least not in the short term. You don't want to do it for generations and generations. But you could take your own crack at this same pairing and hope to get that white snake. Again, if you had six eggs, you could end up with six white snakes. You could end up with six normal. So I rolled the dice here and I'm cool with my results, but they're not the best that they could have been, which happens sometime. Z happen sometimes. These guys, they've got lots of different things to hide under. They haven't eaten yet. I imagine they're not even drinking this water, but they will soon. And once all that is happening and I've got two meals in them and I know I can make them eat uh, frozen instead of live uh, rodents, they'll be for sale. So be in touch if you're in Canada, if you're in the Toronto area, these are going to be awesome pets and uh, you'll know their whole story and their whole pedigree, which I think is, is fun. All right, sleep tight, you guys. We will check on you soon. Okay, gang, that is essentially it for this very long video that's been a big update, and I hope you've stayed tuned and enjoyed yourself or learned something new. Uh, so you'll see ST on this egg, uh, Stunner's Clutch, which we candled together in this video. It's only been laid for about two days, only been in the incubator for about two days. All the other eggs look phenomenal, but this one I noticed uh, stinks, turned yellow, and has white fuzz developing on it. So I'm on I mean, that's how quickly this stuff can happen, I guess. I don't know if the humidity's off, the, there's like yolk on the outside, I guess the egg was perforated somehow. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine how. Uh, also feeling this, it feels like a, a boiled egg. Like it's it's coagulated, it's, it's hard inside. And as a rule, like a little bit of mold isn't a big deal and a moldy egg can still hatch, a stinky egg can still hatch, I'm told. But this one, there's just so little good yolk left. It's all hardened which can't be absorbed by the embryo. So I, I'm 100% confident personally that this is uh, dead. And that's too bad, you know, because really cool snakes are, be are gonna be coming out of these eggs. I'm gonna keep an eye on temperatures and humidity in that thing, but I really am not sure what went wrong with this egg. I guess it just happens sometimes. I'm gonna cut this open for you guys on the channel. I'm holding my phone between my knees. Okay, I thought I was recording, but I'm not. Uh, the pop can technique I uh, do not recommend does not make oh okay suddenly it's working in any case uh, this smells terrible and yeah we have a completely coagulated egg nothing was gonna come out of that that's too fuck that's too bad that's too bad and it's disgusting and that's the end of this video we end on a low note but I, I ultimately I'm over the moon got an awesome clutch of baby snakes and an even better one coming Still having a ton of fun with my hobbies, even though Toronto is opening up and lockdown is over. I'm going to cover this up while I talk to you because it's so disgusting. This has been an episode of Hoinoi TV. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. Send me a comment. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Weigh in on all the stuff that I said in this. And any I posed a few questions. If you got the answers, I want to hear them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again real soon.